taken from the Ultimate Killer Collection, by Stuart Dandel. Martha Needle The Black Widow of Richmond Martha Charles was born on the 9th of April, 1863, on the Murray River near Morgan in South Australia. Her home life was a violent one, and her father died when she was still only very young. By the age of 12, young Martha had begun working as a domestic servant in Port Adelaide. Martha was said to be an attractive woman with a kindly disposition, though she had shown some signs of mental instability from an early age. At age 17, she married Henry Needle in North Adelaide, and in 1882, she gave birth to a daughter Mabel, who was swiftly followed by Elsie in 1883, with a third daughter May, coming in 1885. Needing a bigger place to live with their burgeoning family, the Needles moved to the Melbourne suburb of Richmond, in 1885. For the first few years that the family lived in Melbourne, the couple appeared to be very happy and their neighbors had nothing but praise to say for the family. However, over a couple of years, tensions began to rise as Martha would often go out unaccompanied by Henry, and he soon became jealous of the attention his attractive wife drew. In the year of 1885, on the 28th of February, the eldest of the Needles' children, Mabel, suddenly became ill and died. The doctor who attended to the child could find nothing wrong, and was in fact the physician of the lodge to which Mr. Needle attended, the independent order of Odd Fellows. Soon after Mabel's death, Henry Needle traveled to Sydney in search of work, which put more strain on the relationship between himself and Martha. When he returned, the couple were said to be on cordial terms at best. In October of 1889, Henry Needle was the next to be overcome with a mystery illness, and was once again attended to by one of the lodge physicians. One of the peculiarities noted by the doctor, was Henry's complete disregard for nourishment if it was handed to him by his wife. If Martha offered him something, he would brush it aside. If she pushed him further, he would knock the sustenance from her hand and onto the floor. Though when others offered food or drink to Henry, he accepted it openly. This strange set of circumstances raised a few eyebrows to those who were watching, although Henry never said why he was acting in such a way. In the end, the physician and his neighbors attributed it to irritability, due to illness. Eventually, on the 4th of October, 1889, Mr. Needle succumbed to his illness. On his death certificate it read, subacute hepatitis, enteric fever, and exhaustion due to obstinacy in not taking nourishment. In other words, his liver and intestines were inflamed and he had become exhausted due to lack of nourishment. Upon Henry's death, Martha Needle obtained the services of the trustees, executors, and agency company, to administer her husband's will for her. A sum of around £60 was paid as her third share of the £200 life policy, less expenses. The balance of the policy was then invested by the company for the benefit of the two surviving children. In late November of 1890, tragedy struck again and Elsie became ill. Just a six-year-old child, she was suffering from stomach pains and fever, eventually departing from this world on the 9th of December. After Elsie's death, Martha Needle received the child's share of the £200 that had been put into trust. This was again around £60. Less than 12 months later on the 27th of August, 1891, the youngest child, May, died from tubercular meningitis. She was just short of her fifth birthday. Martha also collected her youngest child's share of Henry's life insurance policy. With so many sudden deaths in the Needle family, the physicians were baffled, and although money could be a very powerful motive, Martha had spent almost all of the insurance money on an elaborate family grave, which she visited regularly. The best the physicians could do, was scratch their heads in befuddlement. In 1891, Martha Needle decided to move on with her life and join the home of Louis and Dotto Junkin, as a housekeeper, subletting the attached house to lodgers. 
By April of the same year, Martha had become engaged to Otto, to which, his brother Louis objected profusely. This was due, according to Louis, to Martha's frightful outbursts of temper. He then contacted his family and the Junkins' mother also sent her objections, stating they were due to Needle's poor health. It appears that tragedy was following Martha, as Louis Junkin then became ill in August of 1893, for a period of roughly two weeks. Though as he now consented to Martha and Otto's marriage, he recovered, that was only until April of 1894 however. Again he became ill with uncontrollable violent vomiting and was becoming increasingly unwell, that was until a relative visited, upon which he started to recover. However, after the relative had left on May the 10th, Martha prepared breakfast the following day and Louis was immediately stuck with illness again. He died on May the 15th, with the doctor in attendance saying it was due to exhaustion and inflammation of the stomach and membranes of the heart. After the death of Louis, Otto's brother Herman and their mother came to visit from South Australia. Both of them disagreed to the marriage between Otto and Martha Needle. After eating a meal prepared by Martha, Herman suddenly became violently ill, though he soon recovered. The next day after eating breakfast that Martha prepared, he became ill again and although he also recovered again, it would take two days this time. Upon this recovery, Herman sat down to some lunch that Martha had prepared and was once again taken ill, though this time the attending physician was suspicious. Dr. Boyd who was treating Herman, took a sample of his vomit and sent it to the government laboratory for analysis. When the results of the sample returned, they explicitly stated that it had contained arsenic. Armed with his suspicions, Dr. Boyd went to the police and explained the situation at the Junkin household, after which, a trap was set. Herman asked Martha if she would make him some lunch and when she returned with a cup of tea, he literally blew the whistle to inform officers standing by, who then came swooping in. The tea was found to contain enough arsenic to kill five people. The police then placed Martha Needle under arrest and charged her with attempted murder. An investigation followed and the bodies of Louis Junkin, Henry Needle, and the three Needle children, Mabel, Elsie, and May, were all exhumed in search of poison. Although information differentiates on the amount of bodies that contained poison, and which ones they were. It is safe to say that a minimum of four out of the five held substantial traces of arsenic in their remains. It was also noted that on the night before Louis Junkin died, Martha had been out and bought rat poison before he ate his fatal last breakfast. Charged with the murder of Louis Junkin before the court, Martha Needle pleaded not guilty and continuously professed her innocence. After three days of trial, Martha was found guilty of murder and sentenced to death. Martha Needle was executed at 8.00 am, on the 22nd of October, 1894. Despite constantly insisting on her own innocence throughout the trial, when asked for her last words, Martha Needle replied, I have nothing to say.